Welcome back. So in the last clip, we created and stored an AIP. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the AIP itself through the archival storage tab. We'll cover how to navigate this tab, how to view and download your AIPs and METS files, as well as a quick overview of what you'll find in an Archivmatica AIP and a METS file. If you'd like to read more in detail about the Archival Storage tab, take a look at Archivmatica's documentation, where you can find additional details about the points we'll be covering in this video, right here in the Archival Storage section. So here we are at the Archival Storage tab. And one note before we go further into this video is that you can think of the this tab as a window into your primary AIP store. So it's not itself your storage. It's a way to see the packages that you have in storage, search them, um, and so on. So what you see when you go to this tab is a table that shows all the stored archival information packages for your Archivmatica site. There's a search interface at the top here where you can construct simple or Boolean queries to find either AIPs or individual items. So I'm going to type a keyword search in here. And I search for the word marbles. And in just a moment, we'll see several AIPs at the bottom. If I check show files, that'll let me see the individual files in the AIPs. So that is actually what the keyword search is matching with is files that are named uh, or that include the term marbles in the file name. So at the top of the table, you can also see the total size of the stored AIPs and the number of indexed files right here in this light gray text. Uh, by default, the table lists the AIP's name, um, or in this case, the file name, the size on disk, the date that the AIP was created, and uh, its status, and whether or not it's encrypted. You can add or remove columns from your display by clicking on the Select Columns button at the bottom of the page. That is right here. And if we scroll down, you can choose which columns to retain. So now we're going to find the AIP that we just created. So I'll go back up to the top, uncheck this and remove my keyword search. So basically refresh this, and then I will sort by the created date right here. You can see I've created a couple things since I actually started recording this video, but right here is the AIP that we're looking for. Uh, so now I'll open that up and download the AIP itself and the METS file. So I clicked on that hyperlink. If I select download next to location, that'll start the download for the AIP. And if I click view next to the METS, that will download the METS file as well. Uh, once those two files finish downloading, we'll take a look at what's inside. So we'll start by taking a look at the METS file. Um, Archivmatica generates METS files using a premise in METS implementation where premise metadata, which relates to preservation, is folded into the METS schema. So I'll touch on a few examples of this while we look at the actual METS file, but for the most complete explanation of the, the structure of a METS file in an Archivmatica ape, uh, I would suggest taking a look at the documentation, which I'm showing on the screen now. Um, and you can see a really detailed description of each of the sections, what order they appear in, and so on. The METS file starts with a header that includes a create date right here, as well as links to METS and XML documentation above that. This is followed by a descriptive metadata section or DMDSEC for the whole AIP. And that starts right here. And then below that, there is descriptive metadata for individual objects if you've included such metadata, which we did not in this transfer. But you can see that there is another DMDSEC for the metadata that I put in um, for the whole AIP in the user interface while we were processing this um, AIP. 
And next are the AMD secs, which contain a lot of premise metadata. So you can see right here, um, AMD sec is administrative metadata. Uh, there is one AMD sec for each original object and for each preservation derivative. And I would suggest taking a look at the documentation if you want to understand the details of how these sections are constructed and what kind of information is included there. Um, it's just a little bit too detailed for an introductory video like this. Further down, there's one file sec or file section that lists all files. And this section allows you to definitively link originals and derivatives through the group ID. So for example, we can see here is an original digital object. This is the group ID associated with it. And then if you scroll down to hunt a tiny bit, we can see that there are also preservation files here. Same group ID, so this is the preservation derivative of that file that we saw above. So then the last section of the METS file is the struct map or structural map, which lists at a minimum the directories and files in the object directory as uh, the objects directory as they're laid out on disk. So you can see that here. You can also optionally include a custom um, struct map as an XML file that you submit as part of the package, which Archivmatica would then recognize and record in the METS file as a subsequent struct map section. Um, but we haven't done that in this case, which is why you're not seeing that here. All right, so I've unzipped the AIP that I downloaded. So let's take a look at it to see how some of what we just saw in the METS file is actually manifested in the archival information package. So here at the top, you can see the AIP name. So that's based on the transfer name um, that I put in plus a unique identifier appended um, to the end there. Then if you look at the structure of the AIP at this level, um, it's aligned with the Bagot structure. So the files and directories at this top level represent the standard packaging files that are produced in accordance with the IETF Trust Bagot File Packaging Format. If we go into the data directory, that's really where like the meat of the AIP is. So that contains the files that we preserved, both the originals and the derivatives in the objects directory. It also includes logs with outputs from some of the preservation tools that we used, thumbnails, and a readme file that provides some basic information about AIPs and Archivmatica. There's also the same METS file that we just looked at separately is included in the AIP. So if we expand the objects directory and take a look at that, you can see the original files alongside the derivatives, which have unique identifiers appended to the original file name. So here's one example of that. This file, um, the preservation derivative above it, has the same file name, and then there's a unique identifier appended to the end of it, so that sequence of letters and numbers. Structuring the package this way supports its long-term preservation, access, and understandability by binding the digital objects into a single logical package in a way that systems understandable. So here you are. You've now seen what an Archivmatica AIP looks like. And with that, we'll wrap up our introduction to the archival storage tab, as well as the discussion we had about the structure of AIPs and METS files. So just to quickly sum up, in this video, we explored the archival storage tab, how to download an AIP and a METS file, and an introduction to what's contained in an AIP and a METS file. And congratulations, with this video, you've now seen how an AIP is processed in Archivmatica from start to finish. In the next video, we'll take a look at some ways that you can configure Archivmatica from your user interface through the last two tabs, which are called preservation planning and administration. Hope to see you there.